Good morning. I'm trying to remember all the announcements. Um, I was so busy this morning with um, uh, really important discussions that I forgot what the announcements were. Um, oh, first of all, yeah, thank you for those who are able to be here on Friday for our latest in the Roadrunner um, program. Um, there are a lot of a lot of folks, a lot of food. Um, we got rid of a lot of apples. And tomatoes, yes. Yeah, oh, yeah. but it was, it was good, so thanks. Um, there's always room to help if you are, are free on the second Friday of the month. Um, it's actually kind of fun. Some of us get to talk a lot. Uh, <laughs> That would be Klaus. Wait a minute. He can't hear me, can he? No. Okay. Oh, good. I'm safe. Um, and then, um, oh, in our service, we're going to uh, start the uh, Now the Feast and Celebration. Some people know that, and I hope everybody knows it, because uh, you folks have done this a lot more recent than I have. Um, but I've only been a pastor for a few years, so it, you know, it doesn't count much. Um, anyway, so, you know, don't worry about making mistakes, because I'll make them all for you, okay? So that'll work just fine. Um, is there anything else that I need to... No? Council meeting, oh yeah. Council will meet on Tuesday via Zoom. Um, at uh, 5.30, right? Okay. Now, anything else that I'm gonna forget? Well, um, so here's your question, what, first question of the day. What did one Easter egg say to the other? This is bad. You cracked me up. Oh, that's good, yeah, that's, see? That's, heard any good yolks lately? Um, why shouldn't you tell an Easter egg a joke? No, 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 no. Because it'll crack up. Yeah, you see? Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, if you quote something an Easter egg says, is that what it means to be egg-cited? Yeah, yeah. Okay. How many uh, colored Easter eggs? Yeah, uh huh. Still do that? You know why we we uh, um, paint Easter eggs? Because wallpaper is too hard. Yeah, that's right. Oh, that's going downhill. Um, oh, but no, that's a dumb one. Okay. So, did you hear about the? Uh, the the, the giant cow. No? I'm surprised because it's legendary. Oh, yeah. And just a word of advice. I'm not one to give a lot of advice, but a word of advice. Do not brush your teeth alone. Okay? Invite a friend. Invite an acquaintance. Because, now this I'm not making up, because nine out of 10 dentists say that brushing alone will not prevent cavities. <laughs> so brush with a friend. I know, it's, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> geez, it's just terrible. Uh, when do monkeys come out at the zoo? This is bad. In April. Yeah, the month of April, yeah. Um, and last but not least, uh, thank goodness. Um, why did the uh, beaver study astronomy? He wanted to go to outer space. Oh, okay, yeah. See, now all those things are uh, just observations that when you get to the gospel lesson, 
you've heard it 17,000 times before. Um, it is the second Sunday after Easter, and the gospel lesson is always the same. So, as you hear the gospel lesson this morning, listen closely. Do you hear anything different? You know the story well, but can you hear anything new? Um, and we'll work on that. So please join me, if you will, for our Thanksgiving for baptism. During the Easter season, rather than the confession of faith, we, um, or confession and forgiveness, we use the Thanksgiving for baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, by whose hand we are given new birth, by wh whose speaking we are given new life. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are welcome, restored, and supported as citizens of the new creation. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life, you are the everlasting wellspring. In mercy and might, you have freed us from death and raised us with Jesus, the firstborn of the dead. In baptismal waters, our old life is washed away, and in them we are born anew. Oceans and lakes, or rivers and streams, wash us clean, quench our thirst, and nurture both crops and creatures. Praise to you for life-giving water of baptism, the outpouring of the spirit of the new creation. Wash away our sin and all that separates us from you. Empower our witness to your resurrection. Strengthen our resolve in seeking justice for all. Satisfy the world's need through this living water where drought dries the earth, bring refreshment. Where despair prevails, grant hope. Where chaos reigns, bring peace. We ask this through Christ, who with you and the Spirit reigns forever. Amen. Our gathering hymn is 363.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, for the reign of God and for peace throughout the world, for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. For your people here who have come to give you praise, for the strength to live your word, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Help sing on us, O God. The feast and celebration, all of Let's pray our prayer of the day. Almighty and eternal God, the strength of those who believe and the hope of those who doubt, may we who have not seen have faith in you and receive the fullness of Christ's blessing, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning. The first reading for the second Sunday of Easter is from Acts chapter 2, the 14th verse. <clears throat> Excuse me. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as your, you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand so that I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades, nor let your Holy One experience corruption. 
You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned by to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of, of that all of us are witnesses. Word of God, word of life. The psalm for the day is Psalm 16. We'll read it responsibly. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other. All your delight is in the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. I will not pour out drink offerings to such gods, neither take their names upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a rich inheritance. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me because God is at my right hand. I shall not be shaken. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body shall also, re also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The second reading is from 1 Peter, the first chapter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold that, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my fingers in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, 
peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Some things never change. For instance, my socks, or my ability to tell a good joke. I see that can go either way, so I'm safe. Um, I won't get struck by lightning this time. And the other thing that doesn't change is every second Sunday of Easter, John chapter 20 is our gospel text. Every year, it's the same. So what can you do hearing this all this time? Well, you know, I, I remember reflecting on this text that um, when I grew up, the real focus was on Thomas. And Thomas was the number one key to this whole text. And it wasn't just Thomas, it was doubting Thomas. And I mean, that stuck, I remember as a kid in Sunday school, et cetera, and all, all in through school, it was doubting Thomas was, in, was what this text was about. But then if you look at the text, although our English translation has the word, the Greek never uses the word doubt. Oh? Oh. No, the, the Greek word is unbelieving. Jesus says to Thomas, do not be unbelieving but believing. Oh, now, is unbelieving doubt? Well, you know, maybe it's cutting, you know, hairs to make a, a difference because there's a lot, of, a lot of similarity there, but I think there's a difference between doubt and unbelief. Doubt is more of a judgment, and doubt seems to me uh, to be that, that sense of judgment, uh, that sense of mistrust of something. And unbelieving, on the other hand, is confusion and an inability to comprehend. And there's a difference in that. And I think there's a big difference. And besides that, although I grew up with Doubting Thomas being the focus of this text, he really isn't. <laughs> and the believing and unbelieving is a major factor in this text but the real focus in this text are the words that Jesus speaks when he appears with his disciples. Because he says to them, peace be with you. Peace, a sense of wholeness, completeness, of well-being. And it's more than just a greeting and more than just a wish. It's a gift that Jesus brings. And he actually is saying something like, peace is yours. And he gives that peace to his disciples because they're afraid. Now, notice in other parts of scripture, when an angel comes or when Jesus appeared, um, you know, to the, to the women uh, at the tomb, he said, don't be afraid. Well, he doesn't say that here. He says, peace is yours. Wholeness, completeness, well-being is yours. For the disciples are scared. They're scared. They got the door locked for fear of those who might come after them. But Jesus comes to them and gives them peace. And a second time, he says to them, peace is yours. And then, and then he breathes on them and shows them what this peace that he, he has just given them 
is really all about. He breathes on them and says, receive the Holy Spirit. Oh, so this peace brings the Holy Spirit and the task, the task of forgiving and not forgiving. Oh, this peace is really something that Jesus brings. And as we know, Thomas, one of the very faithful disciples who was ready earlier to go, remember the story of Lazarus, he was ready to go into the enemy territory and die with Jesus, if need be. And here he says, I have to see and I have to touch. Is seeing believing? Maybe, or maybe not. Have you ever watched an illusionist or a magician? Seeing is believing, right? Yeah, that elephant just disappeared in the thin air, right? Oh, yeah. The rabbit just came out of the hat, right? Oh, yeah. Seeing is not necessarily believing. And I think that's one of the things John, in writing his gospel, is trying to help us to begin to, to realize and comprehend. Seeing is not necessarily believing. But then again, Thomas, and we can all relate to Thomas because we have those times of, of unbelief as well. But a week later, Jesus comes back, and what does he say? Peace is yours. This sense of wholeness, of well-being, of completeness, and the gift of the Spirit is yours. And Thomas takes one look after Jesus says, come on, you go ahead and touch and, and feel all you want. And Thomas has an insight, a sudden glimpse of the obvious. And he says, my Lord and my God. And Jesus puts it right on the line. Have you believed because you have seen? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Well, isn't that about us? I think why we have this text every year after Easter, the Sunday, first Sunday after Easter, is because we too struggle, like Thomas, in unbelief. You know, when something traumatic happens, uh, a president is shot, or our buildings are run into by big planes, and somebody tells you that, what do you say? Really? Did that really happen? Isn't there a bit of denial and, and, and... Hello there. I'll put my hands behind my back. It may be a quiet sermon after that. Uh, but when something traumatic happens, don't we have this unbelief? And don't we, at times, contemplate God's love for us and say, can God really love me? after I've done such and such? Can God really love that other person who has done such and such? Don't we have those moments of unbelief, of, of confusion and inability to comprehend? And I think that's why every Sunday after Easter this text appears. Because even in the, at the end of our text, the Gospel writes, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe. He shared some of the stories because we are among those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. But it isn't once you believe, all the struggle's over with, right? No. As we know well, it's a difficult time. And a difficult time to be faithful. How do we proclaim God's love and grace to people, and especially to some people that we don't like, or people we don't care for, or people we don't know? How do we do that? That's why Jesus breathed on his disciples and gave to them the Holy Spirit, gave to them that sense of peace that he gives to us, the peace that comes to us as we come to our Lord's table, 
every week. And there in simple bread and simple wine, our Lord comes to us to remind us that we are forgiven, that we are free. Free to simply love and free to simply be and free to experience all kinds of things that normally would create fear. Yeah, they're still scared. We still experience fear, but it doesn't freeze us. It doesn't stop us because the love of God is greater. The peace that God gives to us is indeed a gift and a gift to be shared. So as we continue to celebrate this resurrection of our Lord, and as we reflect on what that means for us in our, our life every day, we hear Jesus' words, peace is yours. A sense of compassion, a sense of justice, a sense of love for all people is a gift and a gift to share. Amen. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the forgiveness of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of rebirth, the good news of your resurrection brings refreshment to a weary world. 
following the women at the tomb, empower us to boldly share your radical love through our words and our work. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. As you breathed your spirit into the disciples, breathe your spirit of healing upon all creation. Nourish the earth with sufficient rains. Strengthen us to counter the, the effects of pollution and destruction. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You prepared the disciples for this ministry by calming their fears and granting them your peace. Equip our community's leaders. Give them a spirit of peace and hearts that burn for justice, that their leadership reflects your love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You come among us in unexpected ways. Send us to those who hide in fear or question your love. Be a healing presence for any isolated by addiction, incarceration, mental illness, chronic pain, sickness, or grief. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. As you met the disciples on the road to Moss, show us your presence along our journeys. Bless our doubts and questions. Provide trusting and safe relationships for all ages. To nurture our connection to you and one another, hear us, O God. Mercy is great. Resurrecting God, you bring us to new life every day. Thank you for blessing us with companions on our faith journey, especially those who now rest in your love. Strengthen us with the eternal peace of your promises. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. Please share a sign of that peace with those around you. God's peace here. God's peace there.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our calling and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. The power and might, heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is the one who comes in your name. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, gracious, and merciful God. Everything is filled with your glory. We give you thanks for your promises and presence, which have sustained the faithful in this and every generation. Above all, we give you thanks for Jesus, born of Mary, who in word and deed announced your gentle rule of justice, reconciliation, and peace. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come, come again. Christ has died, Christ is risen. Christ will come, come again. On the night in which of his betrayal, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body. And it's given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, and it's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his command to love one another, his life and death, his resurrection and his ascension, we pray for his coming again, even as we cry. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Christ is God. Send now we pray your Holy Spirit that all of your promises may come to us in your whole creation. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our friend. Christ in Christ, the unity of the Spirit. All glory and honor is yours, O God, now and forever. Amen. Make us bold, O merciful God, to adjust you as our Abba as we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, gives everyone a place at the welcome table. Alleluia. Come, for all is ready.
May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood remain with us as we seek to take the message of love and grace into the world. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word and this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine us and be gracious to us. May God look upon us with favor and give us peace. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the risen one. Thanks be to God.